What's going on, guys? And welcome to another Olympic test. <coughs> Not again. Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever, was directed by Ty West and stars Noah Sagan and Alexei Wasser. This time, the flesh-eating virus that has terrorized the Cabin in the Woods and its co-eds attacks a nearby high school prom via a popular brand of bottled water. Alright, going into this movie, guys, I watched it on Netflix. It wasn't anything big. I was trying to debate on whether I would do a review on it, but since I did the first one, why the hell not? And I'm kind of glad I did because I'm here to warn y'all. Take the, the flesh-eating virus over watching that. I'll just put it that way. The only positives I could say about this movie, like the first one, the cinematography and the lighting was good, but it wasn't as good. It didn't have that darker feel, those red blood-soaked sh shots that the first one had. So, that, that was a little bit of a downer, but still, it wasn't terrible like I've seen in other movies. Elliot Rocchetti did a pretty good job. Um, it, it, was, it was what it was. And the music by Ryan Shore, it was pretty eerie. Kind of like how the first one was. I, I can't really compare much to the first one because this one's like an entirely different movie and all. Although, it is a direct sequel to the first and it does show what we thought was going to be the main survivor at the end of the first one. He does show up in this, but only for a, gr a br very brief cameo. And if you watched it and knew how that ended, you yet understand why. Alright, so the negatives, and this is the big critic coming out at me. The characters was stupid, was lazy, was dumb. I didn't care about a single one for them. I mean, yeah, the girl at the end, I guess I kind of did care for her a little bit. I don't know. The story, it took place at a prom. I've got to give it that. There's more people involved. This fleshing virus, whatever the hell it is, was attacking them by some bottled waters that got shipped to them. I don't know who these people are. And this is another downer. It's like, they never explain, okay, I guess our government takes care of things a certain way but in this movie it never really explains that you know they're trying to confine these people in this school where this prom is taking place and they're just shooting people dead even the people that aren't even sick really i i really don't think our government is that stupid you could at least take them through the proper procedures. They were wearing the proper attire to keep them from getting sick. I understand their mission was to eliminate all threats, but come on. There's like three, as far as I could count, that wasn't actually sick and that got shot anyway. And I'm thinking, really? I mean, that was very poorly done. I get that we're all human. It's just... There's there's a more professional way to handle that. That's all I'm saying. The dialogue was cheesy. The, the whole time I was like this. Really? Did that just happen? And oh my god. There were some shots. And I think I was watching the unrated version. Even though it said I think like rated R on Netflix. But there was some shots in there. The MPAA would definitely have a problem with some of the shots that was in this. It takes a lot for me to to turn away but I did a couple times and it, some of it was just unnecessary it was oh god it's like the director was just wanting to throw in something gross just for the hell of it and I can't even mention what it is because one it'll be a spoiler two it's too gross I'll just leave it at that the direction it, it was okay but it wasn't as good as the first now that I look at it at this one I'd probably pick the first one over this one any day. This movie, it felt cheap. It was in production hell since 2004, from what I read. And Eli Roth was going to be attached to it, but then he dropped out because I think it, they were just taking so long. And even the director, Ty West, I read, I read that he wanted no ties in this movie. He didn't even want his name, and the producer didn't even want their name to be a part of this. 
But they said something about since the director wasn't a part of something that he couldn't use an alter ego, which was Alan Smithy. The same thing happened to the director in Hellraiser Bloodline. They used an Alan, I think Alan Smithy is one of those made up stage names that if you don't want to be a part of a movie, that's the name you use. As far as I read, I, I don't know. <laughs> but this movie, like the first one, it just felt about the same. I just feel like the filmmakers were just wanting to push something out just for the sake of it, just to get that money. But I, I do admit, I think I like the first one better than this one. So guys, Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever gets an F. Even though there was only a, a couple things I talked good about this movie, I'm sticking to that rating. I can't lie to you guys, it is what it is. I hope you like this video, guys. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. For those of you who did, like, subscribe, get reputized, share even. What did you think of Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever? Did you like it or did you think it sucked? Make sure to subscribe to The Reactor Reactions Galore, which is in the description down below. And also make sure to like, the Reactor, and The Repster on Facebook, which is also in the link down in the description down below. Stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. Peace to Repster.